Hi everyone, my name is Antons and today I will show you Spectrum Compact virtual demo located at our website which you can learn about many features and applications of our device. Subtechnica produces a series of handheld uh, microwave spectrum analyzers called Spectrum Compacts. There are in total seven tools covering the spectrum from 300 MHz to 87 GHz. And uh, the tool is perfect for field users. I think it's, it's widely acclaimed by uh, numbers of RF technicians and engineers working in the field. It has a very compact size, it is easy to learn. Uh, though, in order to show off that despite its great, uh, great size, it still has a lot of functionalities that allow you to perform most of the tasks you meet uh, in your day-to-day -day activities. To show you what those functionalities are and make you more common, to help you make this decision about uh, getting the right tool for you, our team created a virtual demo of the Spectrum Compact, specifically 2 to 8 GHz tool. Uh, although the interface, the functions it has, well, they're very, very similar. Uh, the main difference, of course, being the frequency span that each of the tools cover. So, and today we'll have a quick walkthrough, introduction to the virtual demo, just to show you what are a couple of uh, buttons you need to push to access it. And then we'll show off two common tests that RF engineers encounter. One of them will be uh, in-band interference, and the other is the tracing of time division duplex signal. Both uh, have uh, some different functionalities. Both of those tests show up different functionality that Spectrum Compact has. So, without further ado, uh, to get to the virtual demo of Spectrum Compact, just uh, follow the link spectrumcompact.com slash emulator. Uh, you'll find the link uh, in the description below. When you arrive to that uh, web page, you'll be greeted by a quick form that we really want you to fill in to get your contact details, uh, where you only need to submit your name, email, and country to help us understand where the interest for our tool comes from. So, uh, it is very quick. I'll put my details and my working email. Country, if some of you doesn't know yet, uh, Softechnik is headquarters located in Riga, Latvia right by the coast of the Baltic Sea. So uh, we're signing up and we're ready to use emulator. Uh, so what you see in front of yourself is a repl replica of the Spectrum Compact emulator. It might look uh, different vertical if you are accessing the web page through the, your mobile phone or any other screen of a more vertical alignment. Uh, when you come here, you are free to do whatever you like with the tool. So if you already have in mind some, some things that uh, you want to test out, uh, maybe you already used one of our tools, so you just want to show to a colleague of yours how to perform a test. That's also a go-to tool, which we use ourselves to discuss parts of the interface of the analyzer. and. It's a 2 to 8 gigahertz uh, tool, and you can see we've modeled some of the signals uh, for purpose of imitating real-world environment uh, and to give us some playground uh, for, for the analyzer. Uh, so yeah, feel free to test out the functionalities and what different buttons mean on your own if you wish to do so, but we've created a couple of tests uh, a little over 10 tests to uh, show off functionalities and to replicate some of the common tests that the en engineers need. Uh, to access those, uh, you can go two routes. 
One is the application route, the other one is industry. So just click on the drop down and you'll see a couple of options. Uh, so if you kind of have the understanding what are the applications that you might need, there are four different categories that we've introduced. 5G test, interference hunting, point-to-point -point link troubleshooting, or site verification. But if you're not that sure about the applications, but you have the industry, uh, well, just check out the industry selection. Uh, we very hope that one of those you feel that uh, represents who you are. If not, uh, write a suggestion in comments what we have not covered. Oh, and for the time being, just pick whatever uh, you feel closer to, or maybe go through the different ones, and perhaps there are some tests uh, that you, you'll just find by, uh, uh, you'll be lucky and you just find the right one for yourself. So there are a couple of industries, we've mentioned 5G, well, as an industry too, it has its own specific needs. Then there are distributed antenna system integrators, uh, local government, utilities and transport, mobile operators, carriers, regulatory body, well, agencies, uh, satellite communication industry, uh, system integrator industry, and wireless internet service providers. So, for our first test, uh, I want to show you the in-band interference. I think that's uh, a very classic test. So, in the applications, select interference hunting. And you'll see there are four different interference scenarios that are available. Co-channel, in-band interference, out-of-band interference, and wide-band interference. Uh, I picked in-band interference because I think this shows off the beauty of using Spectrum Analyzer the most. Something that uh, is not that easily done if you work with multimeters on a daily basis. Uh, so that's where seeing the whole spectrum really comes into play. So when you see the test that you need, just click on it. And we prepared some instructions, a real specific set of instructions, so you don't get lost. So you'll find uh, the signal that has that scenario uh, modeled on it. Uh, for in-band interference, we've prepared a signal at 4.6 gigahertz, and the instruction usually is laid down in six steps, each with its, its more detailed specific instructions. We've uh, wrote down each button that you need to push, uh, so it might be all too much details for someone who has been using Spectrum Compact before, but we just wanted to make sure that nobody uh, gets lost. Although, as you walk with me, you'll see that once you've started playing with it, the, the Spectrum Complex is, well, it's a really intuitive tool. That's something that our team of engineers tried. Uh, it's hardest to achieve the minimum amount of buttons possible because obviously when you're in field, perhaps hanging uh, on a tower, not really a place where you want to, well, to discover intricacies of different buttons. We want to make it clear uh, so you get as fast as possible. So, the first thing we need to find the signal in this scenario will, well, our main signal is located at 4.6 gigahertz. We know that something's not completely right with it, so we want to check what's, what's there. Uh, so, to select center frequency, uh, as, as described in the instructions, first we click on the FREC button, uh, which opens up a dial pad. Uh, make sure that the center one is selected. And just a reminder, this is a replica of the inter interface, which is uh, used by, well, it's touchscreen in the original tool, but if you have a touchscreen availability on the, the device you're using, then you'll have like the best one. I'm using mouse right now, but really it doesn't matter that much. We've selected that we want to define the center frequency. Uh, we press uh, 4600 to get us to 4.6 gigahertz. 
and press OK to confirm the selection. Uh, well, we see that there is some signal in there, but we need to uh, make a span uh, a more narrow one. So we've been at the frequency, we push back, we're back to the main menu. Uh, we push the, uh, and that represents the second part of the test, selecting frequency span. We need to select span button and define the span. So as you can see here, for this signal, we're working with something uh, along the magnitude of 100 megahertz. Uh, so we input 100 and press OK. It creates a setting, it's setting a span symmetrically around the center frequency. And you can see there is a signal in the middle of the screen. Although we can see there is a beautiful uh, re rectangle coming almost all across the half of the screen with some spike in the middle of it. And well, that's, that's uh, what we can see uh, is might be causing a problem with us setting up a good communication. Um, this one, I say, looks rather beautiful in terms of uh, easy to detect. Real life scenarios might be different. Uh, sometimes you need to wait some time to just understand whether there is anything. We'll cover that a little bit later. What to do if the signal is changing. Uh, but then this thing we can see a rather static interference closer to the right side of our signal. We still always aiming for better resolution on the picture. So what we can do next is amplify low noises to see this picture even more clear. Uh, so we go back to main menu, we select next step from instructions, low noise amplification. This is something that's built in into the tool. Uh, it says exactly what it's called, it amplifies noises uh, and makes our, our tool uh, makes the picture more visible. So we go to level, press L and A button, stands for low noise amplification, and we can see that the signal is more pronounced now. Now that the signal is much more pronounced, uh, the next thing we want to learn about it is the power output that we receive. The Spectrum Compact, is it anywhere close to the uh, our benchmark? power. Uh, to do that, Spectrum Combat has a built-in power and band frequency uh, functionality, which is basically an integral of the amplitude over the frequency domain. And to do that, we go in power and band submenu, uh, which produces with the next choice is we need to select across how wide of a frequency domain will we measure the power. We might know, and in this case, in the instruction we already wrote for you that it's 48 megahertz wide. But of course, you can tell it by your eyesight. We've selected previously a span of 100 megahertz. We know that Spectrum Compact screen has always 10 rectangle wide, which means that each rectangle is 10 megahertz wide. And we can see it's 40 ish something. But well, we can test it by applying uh, the band measurement. So uh, let me select not 48, but well, I presume maybe it's 55. We select 55 bandwidth, press OK. We see nothing changes. The PAB marker, uh, PAB letters shows that the marker is somewhere away. We don't need to search for it. We have set center button. We push that and we can see a blue part of the screen which denotes where the power output is measured. So we see it's wider than the signal that our intended signal. Uh, we can scale down in this scenario, you know it's 48, so no need to do any guesswork. Let's press 48. And yeah, it's much more precise. Uh, well, what is the power output? is 48 dBm. Here we can see the measurement. 
it wasn't there before. Right next to PAP, uh, blue, blue, blue digits about the channel width. So it's 48, 49 dBms. That's an easy way to learn how, how strong is the power output we're receiving. Uh, what's next? We, we, we see the power output. Perhaps it's, uh, it should be different from the one that we expect. Although, I guess by not a big margin, but more importantly, what we see is that there is an interference uh, in our beautiful rectangle of our signal. There is a spike uh, to correctly report on it. What we do, we need to determine the center frequency uh, of the interference signal. Well, we can do it by looking at the screen and doing some guesswork, well, not guesswork, but trying to count rectangles with our eyesight. We have a better option to do that. So let's go push back and go to the next step, measuring interference signal frequency. Uh, so now that we're back into the main screen, uh, let's go into the marker sub menu. And there is uh, a peak button. What it does, it sets the marker uh, to the highest amplitude that is currently seen on the screen. Let's press that, and we can see uh, peak button. The marker's frequency is denoted in the green digits or right over there. So we know that the frequency of interference signal is uh, 46. 9, 46, 10, so 9, 10 megahertz above the center frequency of our screen. And well, in this case, we can see a confirmation of that uh, because of the width of one rectangle, but not in all cases it's located as beautifully right on the uh, border, right on the edge of rectangles. So this future might save you a lot. Okay, so now that we know where a signal is and where is how our signal looks like, where is the interference coming from. We can then, well, try finding the source of it uh, or maybe contact the regulatory authorities uh, for them to investigate, depending on how the laws in your country work. Uh, what else? There is a rather neat feature, uh, Inspection Compact, we are called tracing. There are a couple of different tracing types. Let's go to that step. Uh, it really helps you to put the signal into the perspective. Spectrum Compact is a sweeper spectrum analyzer. So each, uh, each image on the screen you see uh, in this uh, setup, you can't see, but it's actually sweeping across the frequency span. Uh, and it does so with 1000 kilohertz right now. So it's either fast for it to get across the screen without us really noticing it that much. Uh, but to get maybe a more representative statistics, uh, the tracing is a really good set of features uh, that allow us to record multiple sweeps. Uh, so we're in the we go into trace sub menu. Uh, and currently it's in the normal mode. So each sweep is well, it's not recorded. It's shown from from new. But if we select cumulative tracing, then you can see that each trace each sweep sorry generates uh, one point, and we can gather statistics of noises that are happening there. Uh, you can see the green counter changing it. So right now we're just over 120 sweeps. And we can see that this one is a rather stable signal, artificially generated, which helps the case. Uh, and you can see, well, what is there on a more statistical approach? Once that is done, uh, you can save it uh, for later use 
and to be able to well show the same statistics uh, later when you're I don't know in your headquarters or to be able just to relate your situation to someone the same regulatory authority it's just easier to show them a file than talk about what's happening there that's all about the uh, first test the inbound interference I'll go back to trace like the normal screen and go to the main menu the second test that I wanted to show you is tracing of time division duplex signal. Um, I'm sure most of you know what that is, but just in case there are two types of um, communication protocols uh, when the uh, between receiver uh, and sender because the well the the same the same tool the same tower might be used to do both well it is usually is used to do both uh, so frequency division duplex the frequency at which the signal is received and at which the signal is sent away is split in the frequency so there is one frequency for receiving and one for sending uh, but it's more and more popular in uh, the last uh, in the last years. It's growing its use as the time division duplex. You don't need separate to need to buy separate frequency channels. In this case, your signal is split not in frequency but in time. So there's a reserve time for sending uh, data, and then there is a reserve time for receiving it. Uh, to trace such signals is, well, it's a challenge of their own to understand what's happening, how the same channel, well, what is the channel usage statistics? Is there any anything else, uh, well, interfering with the signal or just anything plainly does not working correctly with your equipment? So you need to know how does that work? We actually have a really great uh, application note on our website. Uh, check description, there should be a link to that, where we talk about TDD and in case you might want to learn more details about it or just enjoy reading more than listening to me, go there. Uh, but meanwhile, let's go to, and check out the another test that we have in, sim, in our virtual demo. Uh, let's select 5G test application because that's something uh, TDD is really used in 5G test. And let's select tracing TDD signal uh, test instructions. So first Let's, we need to go to the signal that we're working on. In this scenario, it's at 2.4 gigahertz, so a classic Wi-Fi frequency channel. Let's select FREC to select center frequency, and let's put in there 2411 uh, megahertz, and click OK. So, we now see a signal that evolves in time. We, well, we can see with our eyes that it's, it is located within some span. Uh, perhaps we want to make the span more narrow. Uh, for that, there is the second part of our instructions. Let's go back to the main menu. By now, you already know how to do that. Now we go to the span submenu and we dial in 50 megahertz now yeah so now we're looking closer at the same signal uh, we might want to turn on low noise amplification if it isn't turned on from the previous test but i already have it on i can see it here right on the screen a little uh light blue uh, letters LNA on, meaning that low noise amplification is already on. Let's just check the third step, but yeah, nothing new there. 
uh, it's the same thing that we've done in the interference signal. Uh, what we might want to do with this signal though, even though we see it good, we might want to trace out to understand how wide is it, is it really is, what are the amplitudes it's, go it's coming to. Uh, to do that, let's go to detector settings. First, we want to set up how will the spectrum compact uh, register each of the sweeps. So, when we need to go to the trace, and we can see at the top of the interface there are three options. Detector average, the one selected right now, detector max or detector min. What does it mean? Each time the uh, spectrum compact sweeps across the frequencies, only one point is uh, drawn, despite there being, uh, well, a distribution of the power received. And that's what the detector is about. Right now, each time there is an average recording, uh, average recording uh, display. What we want to select this time is the maximum one to understand where it reaches. You can see it's going up slightly. We can select minimum just to see what the difference is. And you can see the signal shows is shown lower. Uh, so let's select detector max once again. We're currently registering maximum of the signals that we receive. And the next thing is what we want to do is start tracing. Let's go to the next part of instructions. We don't need to go to the main menu. We're still using the same submenu, trace submenu. Next is we select the type of tracing that we want to see. Before we use the cumulative one. Now let's see what the min max hold is about. And what it will help us do, not produce the points, but at each frequency, it will register only the maximum one achieved throughout multiple and multiple uh, sweeps. Let's see for ourselves. As I press min max, you can see that at first it wasn't that uh, pronounced as a rectangular signal. It was more like uh, uh, zigzaggy, but then with multiple sweeps coming over, and you can see the sweep counter right here in dark blue, it's approaching 200, over 200 sweeps now. Well, across multiple sweeps, it produced a beautiful rectangle uh, with a slight deviation on the very end of it. And we can do that again, just pressing min max, it resets the counters. And well, after some time, we, we achieve the same, the same signal. It's minus 50 dBm all across the table. Uh, that's the maximum signal. You can see the minimum, that's very, very stable. Uh, so it represents the base noise level. And that's how we create from a really like, well, it's not stochastic in this case because it's artificially made, but from a rather changing time evolving signal that is harder to grasp with the eye. We kind of can see where it's located, but to know like a more specific parameters of it, the width, now it's easily achievable. We know that each rectangle now is 5 megahertz, so it's 22, 20, 21, 22 megahertz wide signal. We know its amplitude, its maximum amplitude. Uh, so we understand it, well, we understand its nature, even though uh, not as visible to the eye. Another way to do that uh, is to build a time plot. Uh, let's go to the next part of instructions. Let's go to the main menu. Um, and let's get to the tools and settings. That's where a couple of different things uh, is located. What is interesting for us right now is time plot. Uh, for that, we need to click on record time plot. And you see the screen has changed completely. There is no more signal anymore. So uh, to do that, 
we still can see that our settings are still the same. We're centered at 2411 and it's 25 megahertz to each direction now, to the left and to the right of it. Uh, LNA is on, so all the settings are still there. Uh, and what we want to do is just press new record. What you'll see is each, it produces row, which represents one sweep of uh, across the frequency. So we can see a lot of sweeps stacked on one another. It gives us a different perspective than the tracing that we've seen before. Uh, let me just press a new record. I'll do that again. And when it's halfway there, when I press new record again, it will save it. And you can see that there are two newly created files, uh, R0005 and R0006, which are images of our, uh, that are recordings that were just done. Select the one that you're interested in. This is the last one I did. And then select open time plot. And there you can see it in static. So uh, it's saved on the Spectrum Compact now. You can send it back to your team or check it yourself afterwards and more details on the PC software that we have. Uh, just as I said, each row, each horizontal line represents one sweep. We see a lot of uh, blue noise uh, to the left and to the right of main uh, signal. This is the base level, the base noise level, ground noise level. And in the middle, we can, we can see, we can feel what we have seen previously with our eyes, but now it's more uh, uh, laid out in front of us. How does each sweep perform? So this one is very chaotic one, but uh, we can still see that there are more, uh, there are multiple like channels inside of the signal that were used differently. There are ones that are used less, like in the very middle, the one being the more bluish one. And then there are the ones, more red ones that achieve the higher amplitude on a more often level. So that allows you to see your data transmission, to see your signal in a completely different way. So that's about it, about TDD signal. What I really want to say is that we have a lot of different tests. Uh, most of them will start you in a very similar way. You need to select center frequency, select frequency span. Uh, but then after those two, it's usually some other, some other uh, functionality of Spectrum Compact being shown off. There are plenty more, so check out other tests. There is mask mode, which is great for catching errors. Uh, sorry, to catching, well, errors or breakdowns on, from your receiving equipment. Uh, Spectrum Compact can su suppress harmonicas. Uh, so that's something. Check out the multipath test. Those are really shows off what this really small in size, just the phone, mobile phone size device has a great array of functionalities. So that's all, folks. If you have any suggestion, um, about the emulator, about maybe next videos, uh, leave a comment below, or you can contact us through our website contacts part.